all of these cloud subscriptions are getting out of hand, but you don't have to worry about that anymore. Enter the Ugreen NASSYNC DXP4800+. Plus. This thing is incredible. You have up to four drives and you have redundant caching with 10 gigabit and two and a half gigabit ethernet. And we will absolutely show you how you can access this from anywhere using an app that's available on iOS, Android, PC, and Mac. Let's get started. All right, now that we have it set up in the other room because we need an ethernet jack and we're running a little low on those in here, we're gonna go ahead and find it on our network. All you have to do is go to your browser and type in find.ugnas.com. That will launch a utility that will search your network for your NAS. And it looks like it already found it. So let's go ahead and hit connect. And that'll open a new tab with the IP address of your NAS. All right, now we just have to read and accept the user agreement, hit start. And now we can name our NAS. We're just gonna go with NAS, very creative. And this is where you create your administrator account. Make sure that your password is super secure because this is your admin account. So we're gonna go with Jacob as my username because that's my real name. And then a very super, super duper secure password. Hit next. For the purposes of this video, we're just gonna skip the registering part. Go ahead and hit skip. Now we're greeted with an option for which updates to take, and we're only gonna install the important ones. So I'm gonna agree and hit initialize. It's gonna do its thing. So it's gonna say, hello and welcome to your Ugreen NAS, and it's gonna give you a little tour. So first off, it's gonna show you how to show all the apps in your library, then how to get to your storage manager, your file manager, your control panel, that's super important, and the App Center, which is definitely a good place to get more apps. And then it shows you how to set your own wallpaper there. I'm just gonna ignore that one for now. In this NAS, we have four four terabyte NAS hard drives from Western Digital, and these are fantastic for being in NASs because they are very resilient to vibration. And when you're in a NAS, there's a lot of vibration because there's hard drives stacked on top of each other. We're gonna go to our storage manager, hit start, this is gonna start off with asking us the RAID type. And I really like that it's recommending RAID 5. That is the one that I would have chosen for these four disks. Uh, it's also asking me to choose the hard disks. So one, two, three, four. And you'll notice we have two one terabyte SSDs in there as well. We'll get to those in just a bit. Now it's asking us to choose our capacity. We're just gonna go with the full tilt of 11,132 gigs uh, and the file system. Now, file systems are a little bit outside of the scope of this particular video, but we're just gonna go ahead and choose ext4. Hit next. Now this is just giving us a summary of what we've chosen to create one volume with a single storage pool. Hit done. It wants to make sure we know we're formatting these disks, so you have to hit format, and then you have to put in your password in order for it to do that. That's just to make sure that you don't accidentally delete any data. Hit confirm. It's gonna create that pool. Once volume one is done formatting, you just go right over to hard disks on the left-hand side, and then select the three dots next to one of these SSDs, and hit use. Now it's gonna give you two options. You can either create a storage pool or you can create an SSD cache. We're going to create an SSD cache because we want to take up the full bandwidth of our 10 gigabit network. So we're going to create the SSD cache for storage pool one, hit next, volume, volume one, cache mode is read write. Now to create a read and write cache on this particular NAS, you're going to need at least two SSDs. And I really like that because it means that the data you're putting onto your NAS is redundant, even when it's on super fast storage. So we're going to go ahead and hit next. I understand the risk of data loss because if a power outage happens, things can happen. Confirm. Select RAID 1. RAID 1 is your best option because that's just mirroring and since this is just one drive and one drive, the best redundancy you're gonna get is a mirror. Uh, select the SSDs, selecting them both. And then we're just gonna go ahead and put out 916 gigabytes of data for our capacity. 
Now it's just gonna give us a summary and everything here looks good. So we're gonna hit apply. Format, and once again, it's gonna ask me for my password. Awesome, so those two things are done. Now what we've gotta do is go over to our control panel, go to file services, and then enable SMB service. That means that you're gonna be able to access your files while on your home network. That's gonna be way easier than using an app most of the time. So you wanna make sure you do that. Hit apply. And just to make sure this is working, I'm going to copy this address down here for Windows. Go over to my file browser and paste it in. Let's see what happens. And because we don't have a shared folder, it is empty. So there's nothing we can access. Now, what we're going to do is go to close this file manager. And it's going to show you a couple things like personal folders, shared folders and user folders. I'm going to hit start. And now it's showing me that I can create each one of those kinds of folders and another way that I can create these folders. Ooh, there's even really cool tools in here like file deduplication, recycle bin management, and sharing management. So we're gonna go ahead and enable the personal folders. This is just something nice that you can do to make sure everyone has their own private folder. Hit okay. Now, I'm going to go to shared folder, new folder, create new shared folder. And I'm going to call this next cloud. Go ahead and hit create. Now everybody on here, which is just me, can read and write this. Hit okay. And now if I go back to my file browser and refresh, I now have a next cloud folder and a personal folder, which is fantastic. So great, now you have storage on your home network, but what if you wanna access it from your phone? Well, that's actually pretty easy too. So we're gonna to go to App Center. We have to agree to the user agreement, which fair enough. Now, the one we're looking for here is Docker. Now we're going to install Docker on volume one. Hit install. It looks like Docker was successfully installed, so we're gonna go ahead and hit open. Read and accept the terms. Now you have a whole suite of tools to install all kinds of apps on your NAS. So the first thing we're gonna do is try to download the image and we're gonna go to image and then image database, search, next cloud. And it pulls that one up right away. Go ahead and download that image. It's gonna have a version number thing that you can fill out, but I'm gonna keep to the latest version. Confirm. Once your image is done downloading, you're gonna go over to container, hit create container, and it's gonna have a drop down of all the containers you have downloaded. We're gonna choose next cloud, hit next, and I'm going to just name this next cloud, CPU limit unlimited. We're gonna want this all the time, so I'm gonna hit auto restart there. There's a bunch of variables down here that I wouldn't worry too much about. And the thing we're gonna need to do is on our port mapping, change this to 8080, just so it's a little bit easier for us to remember. Hit confirm. So once you see that the container is running, it's very easy to go to that website. All you have to do is click quick access and then the IP address. Now it's going to prompt you to create a new account. This is a new account for a web service that you're hosting on your NAS. This is basically a Google Drive or a OneDrive type cloud deployment. The amazing thing about Nextcloud is that you can run it on just about anything, be it Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android, even uh, iOS. It's just absolutely incredible. Now you will get this little warning down here for performance uh, because we didn't choose a different kind of database, but that's a little bit outside of the scope of this particular video. So you create your account here. I'm gonna go ahead and create one, uh, Jacob. Now, all you have to do is hit install. It's gonna say, hey, we recommend these particular apps. Uh, I actually am a super big fan of them because you can sync your contacts from your phone. You can have a mail server if you want. And then you can use Nextcloud Office, which is a cloud-based way to do all kinds of office work like spreadsheets and documents. Uh, Notes is pretty awesome. 
And this app called Talk is incredible. If you have two people that have access to the same Nextcloud deployment, they can have chats and talk to each other and it goes directly through this, all right? So we're gonna install all of the recommended apps. While we're installing that, I'm gonna show you Nextcloud's website. It's actually pretty awesome. Nextcloud. And all you have to do is hit download on the desktop and mobile apps. So you can download for desktop Nextcloud files, choose your operating system. For us, it's Windows 11. Hit save. It's gonna download and you would install it like any other application. If you go up here to files, there's a couple files that it comes with and it's super easy to get rid of those if you want, but you can definitely organize anything like this. So it comes with some really nice photos that you can use. Oh, oh, that's nice, and photo of their offices. But that's pretty cool, and now all you have to do is install your Nextcloud client. There are apps for iOS and Android, but here on Windows, we're going to use this .msi. Go through the normal instance. All right, now that we've restarted, we're going to log into Nextcloud through our client on our Windows device. And we're gonna put in our IP address. So you go HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, and then your IP address, in our case, that's 192.168.1.13 colon 8080. Go ahead and hit next. It's going to have you sign in on your browser Log in. Once you're logged in, you just have to click Grant Access. Now you should be able to access this directly through your file browser. So it's gonna ask you if you wanna sync anything, I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, use virtual files instead of downloading content, which is fine for most things. You don't actually have to hold anything on your computer because that's the point of the NAS. But you go ahead and hit Connect it's going to sync all of the files that are currently there. These are all the same photos and documents that were already in Nextcloud. So there's the bird, chimpanzee. It might take a second to download the full size image, but that is pretty spectacular. And if you have a VPN like WireGuard, TailScale, or TwinGate, which is my personal favorite, and voila, you have a super secure cloud platform hosted from your own house that you can log into from anywhere in the world, and it was that easy. And you can get yours at your local micro center. And if you don't have a local micro center, put hashtag I want a micro center near me down in the comments.